10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... Ladies and gentlemen, that is a great way to start off the CompetitionPlus.com Power Hour here on Tuesday night. I'm Lee Kraft, a.k.a. the Monday Morning Racer, one of your hosts for this show. Darren Williams Jr. will be in studio in just a few moments. And yes, we have in the green room, Mr. Richard Freeman. We'll be talking with him in just a few moments here on the Competition Plus Dot com power hour. The great Les Mayhew giving us some spectacular shots with editing from Bobby Bennett right there from the Skag Pro Shootout presented by Johnson Horsepower Garage down there at Bradenton Motorsports Park. That was a spectacular drag race that they all had there in the state of Florida. Drag racers just go to Florida to keep the burning of fuel and the burning of rubber and the setting of great speeds and great times down there. We truly live in a time where racing never stops. You know, you see all those memes 
with the Super Bowl wrapping up. Oh, now it's time to get to racing. Racing never stops. It is wonderful that we are in a day and time where it just continues and continues and continues. If you are a motorsports fan, we have it all the time. And just being a drag racing fan, we have it just about all the time. From the Snowbirds to the Streetcar Nationals, and now we all hope that we will have an annual meet of this caliber at Bradenton Motorsports Park, the Skag Pro Shootout, presented by Johnson Horsepowered Garage. Uh, so uh, without any further delay, uh, my uh, co-host here, he's set up, and we're going to roll him right into the uh, window. And oh, wow, Darren, look at that, sporting some garb there. Nice. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Competition Plus Power Hour Live here on Tuesday nights on Competition Plus YouTube and Facebook. Lee, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Man, it is going great. It is uh, wonderful. Uh, my neck of the woods be heading soon north to get some more content at McKinney Corp. And uh, my drag racing season is quite near to firing up and going full throttle in coverage that I intend for this year. Uh, that's really cool, man. Drag racing season is back in full effect. And I'll tell you what, there was a great drag race this past weekend out at Bradenton Motorsports Park. I was there on the scene and, man, what a great event it was. You talk about it. Close racing, side-by-side -side racing, night racing, 341 miles per hour in Nitro Funny Car. What would you think about that, man, from Bob Tasket? That was amazing. Well, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up. Mikey throws in the comments section, uh, 341 miles per hour, 0. 0.68. Uh, Alan on, Alan Reinhardt on WFO said earlier today, I mean, the way he worded it, yeah, it's not a national event record. And yeah. I think that's what's critical. It is not a NHRA national event record. But yes. for all intent intensive purposes, it is a drag racing record. Yes. These clocks, we, it has been, it has, th this has been covered by competitionplus.com. Probably the place really to understand how and why these clocks were not cooked. The yes. man that is the genius, if you will, one of them, when it comes to timing, he was there. He got them adjusted. They were right. 341.68, that is legitimate. And sure, I don't blame the NHRA if they don't recognize a record like that and it not happening at a national event. That would be like the NFL saying something that happened in the AFL. Yes. I don't blame them. But where it will be is certainly a place like Drag Illustrated when you thumb to the back and you look at that record sheet kept by Brett Kepner and the rest of the drag racing world, we know it's a record. Bob, you were the first. Congratulations. Yeah. And That's what I think. We saw that 339 from Antron and testing. We're all like, well, you know, they said it wasn't legitimate, but here's the thing. Bob Taskin went 339 on Friday night. So we knew the horsepower was, horsepower was there. And then he goes 341 the day after that. And I'll tell you what, although it's an unofficial record, it's not an official record because it didn't happen at an NHRA national event. As a drag racing fan, it was still so cool to see, man. I'll tell you what, you know, our buddy Les Mayhew, when that when that 341 popped up on the scoreboard, his fist was in the air, my fist was in the air. We hugged each other. It was like, to be a drag racing fan, yeah. to see 340 pop up on the scoreboard, man, so cool. It was awesome. And, you know, credit to, I mean, can we also, everybody's saying Tasca, Tasca, Tasca. I don't think I've heard enough, though. Aaron Brooks. Yes. Wakahara. Yes. People, two crew chiefs that yep. if you think were kind of like, well, especially Todd Okahara, like what was going on with him with Don Schumacher racing? Where was the performance? Aaron Brooks has that short stint with Doug Foley. Not yep. quite the performance there, kind of bebopping around helping teams. They get Tasket into the best championship shape he's ever been in his career with a shot in Pomona and then comes out and smashes the record books. I mean, I don't think we're giving quite enough credit. He just didn't tiptoe to 340. He yes. went through the envelope yes. and pushed out to the other side. Yes, like I just mentioned, 339 on Thursday night. Excuse me, I said Friday night because, you know, you're thinking Friday to Sunday. Well, the event was actually Thursday to Saturday. He went 339 on Thursday night and then went 341 on Friday night. And, and like you mentioned, you talk about Todd Okahara has had a great time with Schumacher in his past. And, you know, that year in 2022 was a, a little bit of a struggle. And he goes over to Tasky and teams up with Aaron Brooks. And Aaron Brooks, we know he's aggressive. They team up together. And what do you see? They have a great year last year. Uh, came just oh so close to winning the championship. And they go 341 on Friday night in Bradenton. Yeah, Friday night in Bradenton. And um, I'll tell you what, Bob Tasket, they're looking forward to this 2024 NHRA season.
they certainly are and oh okay there oh and we're having technical difficulties here live it happens but darren also you know let's give some historical perspective because frankly so often we have well not long-term memories frankly don't even have short-term memories when it comes to drag racing and people think these things are so new. I would even argue with the uh, pro, the the Skag Pro shootout. That nonetheless, controversy over records are nothing new in drag racing. Uh, one of the biggest barriers ever, the two hundred mile per hour barrier. There's controversy around that. You could know, you could throw in three names into that ring: Caramassini's, Garlitz, and Coletta. And then the first to the fours didn't happen at an NHRA event. It was an IHRA event with Eddie Hill. So this is nothing new. And that's why I don't think there really should be that much discussion on what the NHRA is going to do because they've already set a precedent. They're going to recognize their records. That's just what they do. Uh-oh. We lost you, sound-wise. And I know Darren had something queued up that was good. Oh, yeah. So probably what happened there for Mr. Williams is he got a phone call or a text of some type. And it, when it switched to that audio, it, we lost him with the show audio. That happens. It's live. Uh, Mr. Freeman, we are ready for you whenever you are available. So down there in the green room, if you'll make your camera go live once again, we'll get to you as soon as possible. Thank you for your time. I'll go to the comments section while we're waiting for Mr. Williams to come back in. The co-host here on the Competition Plus, mm, excuse me, Power Hour. Thank you all guys for watching. Yes, Drag Racing Mayhem, I think this is going to be interesting. Don, hope you're doing well. Uh, Kroger sucks 45. I love saying that YouTube handle. Pro Superstar Shootout was a great event. Yes, I agree. Hopefully NHRA got the message. What message is that though? I know that me and that Darren and I, we are looking forward to chatting about it later on and uh, get perspective he was there i was able to watch some of the stream and uh, just talk all of it out and see where this event stacks up also bobby bennett uh, owner uh editor uh, the editor for competitionplus.com put out today before the show a great article on his thoughts concerning this drag race and we're talking about an individual that has been covering drag racing for decades upon decades with many different platforms and for 25 years plus this platform with competitionplus.com and he has seen it from uh, the pro mod shootouts to the nhra national events ihra national events to this pro shootout at Bradenton Motorsports Park, and he gave his thoughts on it, and I think it was a great article that was, well, right down the middle, and I think for drag racing right now, that is going to be the best way to look at this event, is right down the middle. I have seen, and in, in text format, I have noticed hyperbole on both sides negative and positive. And I think we're going to really get the best for drag racing from this event if we take it and we give it the proper analyzing and put it out there in a way where it does help and support the sport. So don't take one side or the other but you take what definitely is going to help the sport. So while we're waiting for the co-host, my co-host Darren Williams Jr. to come back in and possibly also Richard Freeman with the, uh, the camera to pop back up, we'll continue in the uh, comment section. Uh, Andrew, I think Dave Conley was the most impressive this week. weekend, proved he's one of the best natural drivers in NHRA. He did an outstanding job. And, uh, you know, he has remained out there 
in the pits for sure and is a major individual within uh, pro stock uh, drag racing. But yes, good to see him behind the wheel go straight to a final uh, after being back in the uh, after not being in behind the wheel for a while. Ed, he says, the message is to have a vision and execute the vision to grow the sport at both pro and sportsman level. Great. Was that accomplished? Darren, we're, we're waiting on for uh, Mr. Friedman. He's in the green room. I don't, yes. I don't think he's got the camera back on, but whenever he does or he, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. Mr. Friedman, come back in when you get a chance, okay? <laughs> All right. So. Maybe, maybe that will work out because sometimes weird things happen on the green room side. Uh, but we got you back again. Yeah. Historically, talking about records and there being some controversy, that's nothing new. Yes. No, for sure. And um, I, I didn't have anything great to say when you said that. I heard you before I got off here. But no, like you mentioned, you know, Gene Snow was technically the first to go four seconds in the NHRA in, in Houston in 1988. So uh, like you mentioned, but just all around, just what an amazing event. Like I said, I was there on the property and um, you talk about the, you know, the feel of the race, the energy. It did not feel like an NHRA race and it felt different. And I thought that was really cool. You talk about the one qualifying session on Thursday, three on Friday. You know, we run three elimination rounds, four technically on Sunday for eliminations. But to see three qualifying rounds on, on Friday was so different. And then, you know, three rounds on Saturday of eliminations. And I thought it was so cool how, you know, it made, it made qualifying just that much more interesting when you only take the top eight instead of the top 16. Like, uh, just qualifying was just that much more intense. And, um, you know, the event ending at nighttime, you, you talk about these cars that go 12,000 miles, uh, 12,000 horsepower, 330 miles per hour. To see these final rounds at night just made it that much more dramatic. So the all around feel of the race was just amazing. And I'll tell you what, I hopefully, hopefully they do this race again next year. Cause I thought it was, I thought it was a great race for sure. Yes. It definitely was, and could see that from the stream. You felt it there. Certainly knew that Drag Illustrated, Wes Buck, the team, and everyone involved, they were going to put on a great drag race. I've been to uh, the uh, mothballed nameplate, if you will, of the World Door Slammer Nationals. Those yep. two, they were spectacular events. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Mr. Freeman. The camera's live. He looks like he's ready to go. We are going to get him right here on the show, a show that is brought to you by Weldon High Performance. Their pumps, well, they can certainly provide all the flow that is needed for any high-performance application and even applications that get you safely off the ground, through the air, and back on the ground. If they can handle aviation, they can certainly handle a car in the quarter or the eighth mile. CompetitionPlus.com Power Hour brought to you by Weldon High Performance. We just we just lost him. <laughs> hey, lost him. <laughs> that's that's what happens when you go live, man. And, it hey, is. I have some technical difficulties so far here tonight, but all my technical difficulty, difficulties are out the way. And man, I'll tell you what, I'm ready to get this thing on because this race it caused a lot of controversy, not just online but within NHRA and pro. So I'm really looking forward to talking to Richard Freeman and kind of breaking this whole thing down. So I'm ready to get to it, man. Let's get to him now, Mr. Freeman. Welcome to the Competition Plus Power Hour. Hey, guys, what's going on? <laughs> Man, it is good. Good to have uh, you back on. It's been a little while, and we've got a lot to talk about for sure. And, wow, you are in a great setting. Uh, where would you pick up that at great animal you got there on the wall? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the big deer, I'm guessing, or elk. I can't really tell yeah, from here. The, the, the big deer in the center is a uh, – mule deer that I got actually at Roger Stull's place, uh, the, the guy that used to sponsor Mike Edwards. All okay. Right. All right. Nice. Accomplished hunter over there. Well, let's, uh, without any further ado, let's dive into some questions. And honestly, uh, Mr. Freeman, my first question, I know everybody wants to talk about uh, the pro shootout, but we haven't had a chance to talk to you about the 2023 season 
in the Camping World Series and in particular winning a world championship. But at one time, it didn't look like a world championship was anywhere in the grass. But you all turned that program around and Erica picks up a sixth title. Your thoughts summarize 2023 in pro stock for Erica Enders and Elite Motorsports. Uh, started out very, very slow for us, as you know. I mean, started in, uh, in, in you know, we tested real well in Bradenton. We went to Gainesville, and, and uh, after qualifying, I think we set number two behind uh, behind our other teammate car, TJ, and and uh, we pulled up for, for round one, and, and the car wouldn't start. Uh, went back to the pits, and it started fine, and it really – that was a turning point for us. It really derailed uh, our program. Uh, and for the first seven or eight races of the season, we were uh, very, very subpar, to to, uh, to put it lightly. I um, think there was times we qualified in the bottom half. Uh, most of the time, we were just horrible. And uh, I guess it was uh, maybe – Chicago, um, we had done, you know, as you do, you start grasping at straws. We've done a bunch of stupid stuff and, and, uh, we, uh, we found an issue, uh, with some air problems with the front of the car. And, and, uh, uh, I think it was after qualifying. I think we were, I think we were 12. Um, we went back out there and made some changes and we were low for E1 and, uh, uh, and went on to do pretty good. And that was kind of the, the deal that put us back on track. And, uh, we, we just got our shit together for the countdown. And, uh, you know, there was some really good competition out there and, and, uh, you know, we were, we were lucky to, to outlast them and, and had some, had some moments there, uh, uh, in Dallas when we won Dallas after that, that was really the, the, the turning deal. But, at the end of the day, you know, we kept our heads down, kept grinding, and, and uh, you know, I got the best best guys in the business, in my opinion, and and uh, they never quit. So uh, we come out uh, come out on top, and and uh, never missed a beat. Uh, got done with Pomona and went right into twenty twenty four, getting ready for uh, what should be a, a showdown. Well, first off, Richard, welcome to the show. You know, awesome to finally be able to get to talk to you. This is my first time to be able to chat with you, uh, especially here on the Competition Plus Power Hour. And you mentioned Erica's name, six-time world champion, 47 career wins. And, you know, you mentioned the slow start, but you guys were able to, you know, put it on put it on them in the second half of the season and win the championship. And you guys start off 2024 amazing by winning the SCAG Pro Superstar Shootout. At this point, you know, do you still get amazed at how Erica is just able to rise to the occasion as many times as she has in her career? Yeah, I mean, uh, she she's she's special, um, especially when it comes to pro stock. I mean, she uh, when we go to a race, she expects excellence, and uh, we uh, it, it it's it's something to see. I can tell you, she uh, uh, the more she gets pinned behind, um, the better she is, and uh, you know, and, and to be honest with you, I've got a whole slew of them. Um, you can't take anything away from any of those guys. Aaron Stanfield, TJ Coughlin, Jack Coughlin, uh, Bo Butner, uh, Jerry Don's coming on strong, qualified really well at the, at the pro shootout. So, you know, we're excited about 24 and, and, uh, and, you know, we feel like if, if she can't get them, there's, there's somebody else right behind her that's going to, I mean, they're going to be coming from every angle. Well, they certainly are going to be coming from every angle. And speaking of angles, this angle of pro stock being in pro, professional racers, owners organization, that's a recent development, is it not, Mr. Freeman? And you were part of uh, streamlining that and working that out where something that seemed to be rather exclusive to Nitro also includes you naturally aspirated guys. Well, I think I think the the pro stock guys have always been a part of pro, but what what I say and and uh, have been saying for the last year is really when I got involved, um, there's walls coming down, and uh, I think I said it on on the last show I was on, but 
you know, when I first started running pro stock in 2009 or 10, um, you know, you didn't dare go to somebody else's pit. Um, it was just a no, no. And you damn sure didn't walk across the, the deal. There was no real, uh, feeling of, uh, togetherness and uh that's one thing i'm proud of with the with the pro group uh man you talk about a group of guys that are uh determined to better the sport uh it, it's it's amazing to get to watch not you know i get in there and i'm i'm in this in these meetings with people like john force and ron caps and bob tasca and tony stewart and uh it's exciting to see uh, everybody working together to try to, to, to make things better. So I'm super excited about uh, what, what we've done thus far and, and what the future holds. And Richard, everything we've seen online so far about the SCAC Pro Superstar Shootout that, is that it was basically a success. Everybody loved it. You know, they loved the three qualifying sessions on Friday. They loved the three rounds. You know, they loved the, you know, the event ending at night, Top Hill versus Funny Car. And, you know, it's up to you on how much you want to, you know, dive deep into this, but can you tell us what the relationship is right now between pro and NHRA at this moment after that race? Oh, I think it's fine. I mean, um, you know, when we, when we started this, uh, and announced to them, that's what we were going to do. Uh, they, uh, you know, they, 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 they didn't embrace it. Um, but that's understanding. I mean, uh, you, you guys got to understand this is something that while, uh, I think there was some stuff back in the 70s, maybe Don Dartlett's did, and, and they raced this race in Tulsa and then went to Indy. What we did was completely different. And and uh, it, it was something that was new. It was a first. Uh, big money payouts, um, fantastic partners. Uh, but we don't want to lose sight really what it was about. It wasn't necessarily about the race. Uh, it was about making sure that all of our partners knew and know how we feel about them. And, and uh, you know, Randy and the guys from Skag, uh, that whole team of people, they stood, stepped up, supported this. Uh, and he's relatively new to drag racing. And uh, Johnson's Horsepower Garage, Jason Johnson, Nikki, Chris, uh, you know, these are people that, they don't get a lot out of what they do. They love the sport. They love everything about it. And that's what this was about. And, and those two companies stepped up and so many, many more, uh, that we had out there and we hosted and we showed them just a little bit different side of, of how we thought, um, some things should be done. And, uh, to be honest with you, Chad head, Michelle Domingala, Woody Woodruff, uh, myself, and many others on the pro board put a lot of time and effort into making what I believe was uh, uh, something very, very special. And we are super proud of that. Uh, and in my opinion, uh, it, the, the, the thing went off uh, without a hitch. While there's a lot of things that we would probably do different, uh, I don't know that anyone expected uh, – the outpouring of support from not only uh, our supporters uh, that supplied money and other things that helped us pull it off, but the fans, wow. Uh, what can you say? I mean, they were 10 deep. Um, they never left the stands to watch. It didn't matter if it was super stock, stock, top sportsman, pro stock. Uh, there was action all the time. And uh, something I'm super proud of, uh, Flo. Um, they come in, this is really the first event, drag racing event that they've done, uh, to this magnitude and what a job they did. You know, there was a live show, uh, on the track and there were things you could go in pit and watch. And, uh, uh, I think it's, I, I, I think it was just excellent. Again, could it be better next time? Absolutely. That was the first time. And, uh, uh, I hope that uh that we'll do more well we certainly all do hope that more will come about and uh, it's honestly good to hear apparently already there's been debriefs and hey we had a good show 
but we can improve it and we can make it better. And that's that's good for that show and drag racing overall. I am curious, you know, interestingly, Pro Stock was involved in this. And yes, I know there was a race, but testing was happening as well. And typically, you Pro Stockers test apart from the Nitro guys. Like sometimes even when on Monday, the Monday Nationals, you got your own lane because it's prepped differently. So how did it all work out where these Nitro guys included you all and there was this pro, the traditional three, if you will, of this type of event down there in Florida? Well, I think we all we locked arms and we worked together. Um, as you can see, the times in pro stock uh, per the air probably weren't uh, as good as what we had all thought they would be. Uh, but that kind of happens when you're trying to run a race um, with all three categories and keep things moving, and which we did a very good job of, uh, thanks to Chad Head and Kurt Johnson and all those guys with the track. But the track for Pro Stock was uh, not as good as what we would like uh, on the starting line, and you can see that in the 60-foot times. Um, but we all adjusted, and I think the show went off uh, very, very well. And, and uh, uh, But the air, we, we could have sure ran better. I mean, we went 48 in testing a um, couple, couple of days earlier, and, and we couldn't sniff that. I mean, uh, we run that 150 with a five uh, on the last qualifying uh, shot to, to take that number one spot. But uh, uh, the air we could have damn sure run better for sure. No, for sure. And aside from the pro stock cars, you know, jumping into nitro a little bit, it doesn't matter if it's official, unofficial, I don't care. As just a drag racing fan, you know, your thoughts on, you know, on Friday night with that 341 mile power blast, just your thoughts. Well, I mean, it, it was absolutely legitimate. Um, again, I'll, I'll go back to what he was saying while ago. Uh, NHRA shouldn't recognize that. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't their race. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's real. Uh, we, we had, uh, very good tech and they, they went through that car both nights, uh, uh, very thoroughly and made sure everything was good. We did have all of the clocks before we ever started, uh, checked, double checked. Uh, they found some, you know, issues early on with the rollout. They repaired that, uh, got that all straightened out. And, uh, you know, I can tell you it's something that Bob Task ought to be proud of, his crew, his people, uh, Ford, uh, what a show. I mean, he did excellent. And, uh, you know, the first night when he went 339, uh, you heard, oh man, that's bullshit. And then come back and roll right through that, like you guys said, uh, to 341. And uh, uh, we're proud of that. I know Bob's proud of that. Uh, super excited and and uh, it was it was neat to watch like you said uh, it doesn't matter if it's a NHRA record or not it's a record in drag racing books uh, in my opinion I think collectively the drag racing opinion is is that it is a record and you know again I don't think the NHRA they're going to do what they're going to do but we know Bob Tasca first to do that with a piston powered machine in a thousand foot it, it, insane in a thousand foot, not even the quarter mile. That is just absolutely insane. Well, Richard, look, if you are able to give us some like bullet points of the discussions and what the expectations are after this type of event, very simply, what are you all wanting as owners and drivers in and out of the the NHRA. You know, I've talked to some after the event and they have expressed that they would like to see rolling in the gate $20,000 for just showing up and because they're providing a part of the show, that type of thing. So what are some of the, the, the big bullet points that you all talk about that, that you want? Man, I think there's a lot of things, um, and and you know th this. I don't want to take away that this this wasn't anything um, to take away from NHRA. We're we're trying to better the sport. 
and uh, there's a lot of a um, lot of things being discussed about TV and streaming rights and stuff like that. And really, what we want as a group is to have a seat at that table and uh, in, in those negotiations. More money, absolutely. But you know, Tony Stewart says it says it the best. It's great to want more money, but is there more money? And uh, so all, all we want's a fair shake. And and uh, you know, again, uh, I love all the guys at NHRA. That they're you know they do they work their ass off just like everybody else does. And and uh, you know, some of those guys showed up down there, and uh, and it was glad we were glad to see them and have them on the starting line. Uh, we we absolutely wish they would have embraced it a little bit more because we think we could have helped. Uh, Gainesville, I can tell you, I had several people come by my pit area and say, hey, we've watched drag racing on TV. We've never been to a national event, but after seeing this, we're going to be in Gainesville. So that's great, right? Um, we're all trying to get to the next level. And, and so to, to answer your question about what do we want out of it, we want a seat at the table. Um, moving forward with everything that's going on and it doesn't matter if it's just the pros sportsmen and everybody alike the fans the sponsors uh there are so many things we could sit here and talk about and uh you know i uh randy at skag says something and he said don't be a noisemaker and uh he's exactly right so at the end of the day if we can all lock arms and start swimming in the same direction, whatever that may be, I think it's best for everyone. Yeah. Com completely agree. And, and Darren, you know, I love what Mr. Freeman's saying because ever since this race, it seems like online there's been – Quit the calling me Mr. I ain't Richard. <laughs> well, Richard down there, he's again, I love how he's put it that, that and I think we're getting a great perspective there yeah. because, you know, you see online social media, you got the two camps, yeah. like pro NHRA and like pro pro. And it's like, I, I don't think that was the intent here, really. Yeah. And we're getting that. Mm -hmm. No, there, nobody wins if you if you build walls. Walls have to come down, not build them. Wedges don't need to be there. And uh, you you can't listen. NHRA is the stage end of story and uh but that doesn't mean that it can't be better it doesn't mean we can't be better and instead of doing a lot of bitching or pointing fingers um uh how about solutions and and we can do it together or we can do it apart apart's no good and uh i'm a believer in that and uh i truly believe that our sport is the best form of motorsports for partners, fans, uh, and all alike. Richard, I think you put that perfectly, and I echo both of you guys. And I, so I love NHRA, and I love what you guys do. And I, it did not create, you know, a, a bigger divide than you know what we've seen online stuff like that. With it being the first race, Richard, you know, what are some things that you guys think you can improve on for the next one? And and do you guys have plans? I know the NHRA schedule is a bit of a grind, and you know, there's not a lot of time to fit other races in between there, but are there plans to maybe do more of these races throughout the year and stuff like that? Shut up. God damn. Sorry <laughs> about that. Uh, I got a house full of dogs. Um, to, to answer your question, uh, I don't even know if we've got our feet back on the ground enough to answer that. Um, uh, I believe that there will be more pro superstar shootout races. But that is my opinion. It's nothing that has been decided upon. Um, I, I think, to be honest with you, I think there is a big opportunity for the sport of drag racing to do some different things that could have NHRA involved. It could have, it could have lots of different uh, avenues to go. What I think this showed us is people still want that personable co connection and that is one thing that i believe we did very well uh as far as things we would do different uh 
I don't know that there's a lot we would do different. It would be that we would do them better. Um, we got our hands around a lot of things. I mean, we, we weren't prepared for that many people to show up. I mean, there were people standing in line. There was traffic. Uh, but while it's neat to see, you want to have more control over that, right? And be able to get people in and out in, in a timely fashion. Uh, one of the things I think we did extremely well is we had every two hours, we had nitro cars going down the racetrack. And uh, uh, one thing about our sport is there's too much downtime, right? We all know that. And I think that's one thing that Chad uh, and all of us worked really hard to to overcome. And I think they did a marvelous job at that. Yeah, that ingress and outgress is so important. I have personally oh. seen... I have personally seen Bill Bader Jr. leave his, his perch of command to go talk to a highway patrolman. God bless that man in that <laughs> yep. time of, of, of people leaving. So, yeah, certainly it is huge. It is major. Well, there is so much more that we could ask you concerning the pro shootout. Darren may very well continue to ask. I want to ask, I thought it was an interesting question, with as many cars as Elite Motorsport fields and has a cooper cooperation with, I mean, nitro deal last year, Pomona with Spencer Hyde. And then I, I know there's a methanol burning funny car. There's so many. What about some of the uh, new classes that have come out in particular, people are wondering, you know, factory X and elite motorsports. Well, we, we, we are uh, helping and doing engines for Lenny Lottie, uh, who is a guy that uh, Dave Udini and Tommy Laney are, are crew chiefing for. And, and uh, let me talk about that a little bit. We also have a partner within our group, right, with, the, with Aaron Stanfield and his group that do the same thing. So we walk that line pretty thin uh, to make sure that we, we – we, we're, we're working together and uh, Aaron's an integral part of our program and uh, we have a interest in it, but it's not our passion. And uh, so uh, we have chosen not to have a car in that class uh, at this point in time. Uh, doesn't mean that's forever, uh, but we, we will be working on some motor combination stuff for them. And we, we actually stayed on Monday uh, to help Lenny uh, you know, start getting some, some runs under his belt and Erica teaching them and, you know, he's never drove a stick shift. So, uh, again, we're going to embrace those classes and help build them, uh, with everything we can. Uh, uh, but we're going to stay focused and concentrated on pro stock. And, uh, there's been some discussion about possible, uh, nitro car, uh, you know, in our camp. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're open to that as well, as long as uh, it's done the right way. And so um, we believe in uh, supporting all of it from the sportsmen uh, where we came from uh, all the way to what we do. And I know this guy has worked for you, for, you, for your team in the past, but, you know, not only do you have a six-time champion in Eric Andrews, you have Aaron Stanfield, you have Troy Coughlin Jr., but you have a man by the name of Jag back in your stable. Just talk about how excited you are to have Jack Coughlin racing for you here in 2024. I know he did a few races last year as well, but be full time with Skag here in 2024. That has to be really exciting. Yeah, it's something that uh, Jag Coughlin and I have been friends for many years. He's drove uh, comp cars and different things, and outside of racing, we're friends. And and uh, Jag, you know, took a, a leave of absence there for a little while while selling their family company and and uh and he always told me he said hey if the right deal comes along and and uh we can do this uh i'd be interested and and uh, he, he's my pick right and so randy and the, and the guy the group with uh skag uh big supporters of m my car with erica and uh when he said that he'd have an interest with uh having a uh a Skag branded car, uh, Jag was the first call that I made. Um, and, uh, you know, we tried to build, build from within and Jag is part of our circle, always will be, uh, whether he's driving or not. And 
I, I couldn't be more proud to, to have him uh, be a teammate uh, to Erica and Aaron and TJ and Jerry Don and the Quadra boys uh, as well. So we're super excited about that. Uh, Jake's a winner, as you all know, and uh, um, it'll be a dog fight within our own camp. So, Richard, uh, my last uh, question for you, I'm going to go back to the pro event, just thinking, uh, you know, you mentioned atmosphere and then payouts. We've had races within the NHRA National Event Tour, like the Texas Motorplex with the Stampede of Speed and the show that they put on. And then I also think about the payout being a top-heavy situated type of payout. It, what was so different in atmosphere with – everything you all set up compared to a Texas Motorplex and national event there. And is the payout model one that should be top heavy? It, you know, I, I think that's a good question. I, I think uh, the way we did it, uh, when you start talking about paying in the middle, right? Um, that's, that's when the payout gets really hefty, right? And so, the one thing we want to do is make sure that everybody that uh, was part of it and showing up that they got paid. So um, everyone that showed up gets paid. Uh, and it was, it was very lucrative uh, for all of us. And, uh, and then by putting that large sum of money at the top, uh, I think just adds to that. I mean, you, you got to remember, you only have eight cars, so if if seven of them are getting paid a really large money to show up, it makes it less important uh, about round winnings. And uh, so I'm a believer in that. I did that with uh, when Wes and I did the race in Orlando. What was that five years ago? Uh, and it worked really well, and I think it worked great here. Uh, you know. To show up at a at a race and a pro stock car gets fifteen grand to show up. Um, I think it's fantastic. When a fuel car gets twenty grand to show up, I think it's fantastic. And uh, you know, just like any big money bracket race, uh, you know, the winner gets two fifty. He can decide if he wants to share. Um, and I think that's a really good way of building bonds between other teams. Uh, and again, this is all my opinion. Uh, but that's what we did, and it, I think it worked great. No, for sure. And I'll tell you what, Richard, you know, being there on Saturday night and seeing that pro stock final between Erica Enders and Dave Colley, man, that was cool. They were side by side, locked together to the finish line, and Erica pulled it out, and the fans went wild. That was so cool to see in person. And I'll tell you what, our boss, Bobby Bennett, he's been, been around the sport for a long time, and he said on his website that this was one of the top five races he's, he's ever attended. So, Congratulations to you and, and Pro and everybody for the race you guys put on this past weekend. It was amazing. Yeah, thank you very much. I, 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 uh, I again, I can't say enough about the group at Pro. Uh, you, you guys got to understand, it's a long time coming, and uh, these guys, myself included, and everybody that's a part of Pro, uh, really uh, set their personal agendas down, and that's something really hard to do in our sport. Um, and uh, everybody worked together and pulled together for the most part. There's some that, that didn't pull their weight, and that's okay. That's to be expected. But one voice, and we did it, and we did it with class. And uh, in my opinion, I think it was uh, a, a historical time for uh, drag racing. And uh, I hope that we can do more. I, I believe we will. And... Uh, I believe we have some unbelievable support uh, with uh, with uh, our partners, and uh, I'm 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 excited about the future. We are too. Myself, uh, Darren, everyone at Competition Plus. I think many in the drag racing world are excited along with you. Thank you, Richard, for your time. Enjoy the rest of the evening with your pups there. Yeah, they're now they're laying down, so we're all good until somebody else pulls up, and then it's a disaster. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Appreciate the clarity, man. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate you guys having us on, and uh, look forward to twenty twenty four. Yes, See you sir. Out there. Richard Freeman, he will tell you like it is, and always good to get his perspective. Yeah. I honestly think there's a whole lot more clarity. 
Yeah. Then, then, than before. I, I had a lot of questions and he answered many of them. Yeah. And uh, we're certainly going to give our takes in a few moments. You were there. I watched a lot of the stream, but overall job well done to everyone involved. It was a spectacular drag race. Yeah, for sure. And and shout out to Richard Freeman because he easily could have been, you know, a little more negative and, and went to the more negative side, but he went to keep it positive. You know, he would yes. say, hey, there, there is maybe there is a little tension between pro and NHRA, but you know, there's not a divide there. And, and that's what I really want to want to hear. And I love NHRA, you know, obviously there is stuff for them to fix, but at the same time, you know, I, I hopefully this, you know, kind of like, like Bobby Bennett said, kind of plants the seed in their ears and say, Hey, we can, you know, do things a little different. We can try some things. And so that's what I hope, you know, came out of this, this SCAC pro superstar shootout. I think it certainly did. Well, me, well, Darren and I, we are going to talk about it from the perspectives in which we were able to uh, digest the event. But we want to give everyone a recap. More is coming out on the CompetitionPlus.com YouTube channel. Already plenty there. But great camera work by the great Les Mayhew, as always, and edited by Bobby Bennett. We're going to play this once again, and we'll give our thoughts right after this great uh, lengthy sizzler, if you will, of what went down at Bradenton Motorsports Park.
again, spectacular drag race. What a great way to pump us all up for the rest of 2024. Uh, you know, Darren, uh, your thoughts on the atmosphere. That's something that uh, Richard Freeman really leaned in on on our time with him on the show. It was your first time to experience a race that is promoted by the likes of cooperation with a Richard Freeman, a yeah. Wes Buck, a Drag Illustrated. I have experienced them, and they do a superb job of getting the atmosphere uh, lively for a drag race. No, for sure. And, you know, I go back to Thursday night after Pro Stock, and, you know, you're getting ready for for the Nitro Cars, Top Film Funny Car, and, you know, obviously they're playing the music, you know, over the PA and uh, Wes Buck, you know, he talks before the Nitro cars come out and it gets you hyped up. And, you know, just you know, them playing the music while, you know, they're prepping the track and, you know, just rise, getting that intensity risen up and stuff like that, I thought was awesome. And I tell you what, these boys, they 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 went they laid it down during qualifying. And I think you heard during uh, when that 341 came up on the scoreboard, you heard Les Mayhew in the background. And shout out to Les Mayhew. I might be a little biased, but hands down the best drag racing videographer out there he does an amazing job and i'll tell you what it was so cool you know friday night qualifying on thursday uh saturday night uh thursday night qualifying friday night qualifying and then the race ending at night you know header flames i thought it was so cool and and see how about the funny cars whooping up on the dragsters once again <laughs> 25 years later and the funny cars still whooping them on the dragsters that was that was pretty cool to see uh it was it was and you know i have said many times that well frankly this race should not have happened because it should not have been needed. Exactly. Yes. The NHRA should have been doing something like this for a while now. I think 25 years since the uh, funny car versus top fuel, that's too long. I don't think it needs to be every year, mm -hmm. yeah. but I think it's been uh, too long. For, for that. We haven't had an all-star format that stand alone yeah. for a very long time. Nothing to take away from what they're doing with the race within a race format. Love yeah. that, that we have that and that is happening, but it's been a long time since we had the standalone variety as well. I think that this race showed that you can go to a smaller venue, bring less cars, and put on a heck of a show. And yeah. that's been proven, whether it's Southeast Gasters Association, Funny Car Chaos, and other places. You don't have to go to the biggest facilities yeah. to have a great time. Yeah. And I want to ask you a question, Lee. Aside from, you know, all-star races and specialty races, you know, one thing that really stuck out to me from this past weekend mm -hmm. was the eight-car fields. And I was always under the pressure. I'm like, I don't know if I really want eight car fields at a national event. I'm like, I like the 16, four rounds and everything like that. But after seeing it, you know, and I see this a lot in NHRA Heritage Series with the top field cars and the funny cars. Obviously, the funny cars, they run round one on Saturday night and run, you know, round right. two through four during on Sunday. Would you like to see that at a national event? I feel like it brung a lot more, you know, drama to qualifying of saying, sure. hey, we got to get into this top eight. Look, you know, for anyone out there in drag racing concerning the NHRA and they say that eight car fields is not a full field, well, they don't know their history. Mm -hmm. There were full-fledged national events where you earn points to a towards a championship that were eight car fields. It is a historical part of our uh, drag racing uh, body. Also, 32 car fields mm -hmm. with points so there has you know 16 became a nice comfortable snuggy yep. place yep. okay just like for example you can still have a good cup race without 43 cars yes it can happen but you also had cup races with like 65 diving off into darlington and it looked like new york city downtown with taxi cabs okay so it has changed over time why not an epping be an eight car field maybe why not why not a specific raceways be a eight car field? Uh, Dar, uh, Southern Nationals, first one, eight car field. Shirley Modowney won it. Yes. And they, they were national events. So, no, it's not just divisionals. Mm -hmm. So, you had that in the history of this sport. And you can see in the modern day, uh, Though you've got several eight-car fields, but you've got eight-car fields in the sense of uh, Funny Car Chaos. You've got, uh, I think, Midwest Drag Racing Series is doing eight-car fields with the funny cars. It's 
I, I don't know why make it where it works. Yeah. Like you don't have to hold to this standard all the time. Yeah. You're still pushing towards a championship. Mm-hmm. Even if it was an eight car field, you could condense the show. I've talked with many people. Why not make sure run into Saturday night? If you come up with weather issues, you just run on Sunday and you're not running into Monday. You know, th- there's a lot. And I've been advocating for a while now. The national event model needs to change. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people talking about it. Now, obviously, someone like Richard Freeman and Wes Buck and the pro, they obviously have a lot more pool and they can get something done. But I do think the national event model, as we understand it, is outdated. Mm-hmm. And it does need to be changed. And I think an event like this can go a long, long way for discussion Mm -hmm. for it to change. Granted, I think we are looking at a year in 2024 where us saying that, oh, this race noticed that there are not 16 cars to make it a full field, especially when it comes to top fuel. I don't think there's going to be that many races this year with that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like you've seen, Top Fields, we've said it hundreds of times, Top Fields is going to be off the chain this year. But it was just, it was so just so interesting and so exciting to see, you know, a guy like, you know, a world champion like Ron Capps not in the show going into the final qualifying session and try to bump his way in. Seeing Steve Torrance not make the show. I mean, this was surprising. And just just imagine if we get this excitement at an NHRA national event. I think that'll just, that'll just bring a lot. But Lee, obviously, I was at the racetrack. What was your experience like watching from home? Well, watching from home, and look, I will say this. I am probably more critical than most when it comes to a stream because I have worked on streams. I've worked on streams, Funny Car Chaos. I've worked on big money bracket races, such as the the, the big one, uh, the Spring Fling out there in Las Vegas, uh, World Fuel Altered Nationals, and others. I probably am a bit more critical. I will say... They had a good quality stream. You cannot take it away from them that Flo put on a high quality stream. Now, I do not feel that they did anything revolutionary. I feel like what we got was something that was very similar to a Fox broadcast. And there was many elements that, well, the Fox broadcast does have, frankly. It was a... Great stream, but it was not revolutionary. Uh, For example, the pit cams. I hope that gets adopted. I think it could be adopted. And if the NHRA does not adopt it, well, teams, step up and do it yourself. I don't know why. John Force Racing should have pit cams for their YouTube channel. I, I think the teams should be doing that. But even with there being the pit camera, it's not revolutionary because it was already done. If you recall with Courtney Enders and Elite Motorsports, they did it at the U.S. Nationals, basically a test run to see if Flo could do it at their own particular event. So I don't count that as being revolutionary, but I think it is something that should be added, and maybe you have some extra commentary, and it's more than one camera. I think that's something you can work to, but I do like that addition for a sport that is built on fan access so much to give that extra access. And you also, you just have people like Nacho that works on Brittany Force's team. He is a superstar. And like his story getting out there more or a camera being strapped to him while he's working on the car and it goes all the way through the run back to the car coming back for teardown and that being a live stream in its own shape, form, and fashion, that would be spectacular. I think that would be revolutionary. So Lee, I, I was told that those 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 uh, pit cams, right? They uh they pick up some really good audio. Uh, did you did you hear anything on the stream? Uh, you I, know, did, no. you know, I'm just just curious, just curious. No. I I don't know. I didn't I didn't notice anything. I haven't heard anything. I'm sure they picked up some interesting audio. I will say that uh, whoever the boom camera operator was, that man needs a raise. That boom cam was spectacular. The the individual holding the actual remote uh, starting line cam, they probably need to give some better instructions or something because I I never noticed that starting line cam be that effective. Maybe have a staging lane cam instead of the starting line cam. And I, again, I'm very critical of starting line cameras. 
uh, and and you're shooting. Go, you to go. Just say so it. I, I just, just I'm it. like, it's yeah. Get up in there. Like if you if you're not about to get run over, you're not getting a good shot. <laughs> Get a man of starlight cameras. Just say it. You got. You got to get in there. You got to get in there. So, I also, even if it wasn't streamed, even if it wasn't streamed, Darren, I've got. I think Jamie Howe did a good job, mm-hmm. but I wish they would have gave Jamie the opportunity, like a Steve Evans, mm-hmm. put that camera in Bob Tasca's face. And Jamie get the opportunity to set it up. Yeah. Bob Tasca is getting out of the funny car. We have just seen a record setting run. The pass heard around the world in drag racing. Bob's pulling the helmet off. Bob, we want you to know that you are the fastest drag racer that there has been. Three, four, one, Mr. Tasca, and get his reaction and yeah. live and in the moment raw and not bringing them to a platform Mm -hmm. Uh, again i'm not knocking the interview after but some of the great calls were tape delay in essence and steve evans or the the individual on the top end being right there when it's raw and delivering that type of information Mm -hmm. and i've experienced it doing it with funny car chaos and giving that news i mean one of the most emotional interviews i know of is uh, Gary Pritchett winning the B field in Maryland, Funny Car Chaos, and he's just crying and he's gasping for air. He's like, this is the biggest race of my life. And it's, it's raw and it's in the moment. And that is spectacular. So, so basically what you're saying is, Lee, not only are you badass behind the camera on the starting line, but you're also a pretty good top-end interview, interviewer as well, huh? That's what you're saying. I, I try. I try. You're the man. You are the man. I, the man. I appreciate it. But no, <laughs> look, I, again, I think the stream was great. Yes. But revolutionary? No. Uh, you know, there ha- there have been some statements made that it's like one of the first streams to have, like, timing. And no, that's not the case. Warren Evans with Funny Car Chaos and many of the other productions that he's done, he's been doing it for years of showing yeah. timing. And not just timing as in reaction time and the final ET and mile per hour, but he'll show you the, all the increments. Yeah. And you can see that on Drag Racing TV. They do that. Every increment. You can, I mean, how do we know? Because other platforms screenshot it and they're like, oh, look at this loss. <laughs> so, you know, it's not the first time that's happened. It was a tremendous production, but I think revolutionary might be a bit of hyperbole. I got you. And obviously with me being at the racetrack, I wasn't able to, to watch the stream, you know, from start to finish. But there was a big, um, a big, uh tv in the in the staging lanes you know where the cars line up and everything like that and i was able to watch that and and actually i could hear jack beckman and ralph shaheen you know you know with their commentary and everything like that and from what i saw it looked like a very professional production and everything like that so uh, from what i saw i thought it was cool and and you got to give a shout out to jamie howe um i was back in the pits and i saw a jamie howe do an on-the-spot pit report and there were fans trying to get in front of the camera and she kept her cool kept her you know kept her professionalism and kept on going so shout out to jamie howe she did a great job and um she had a very candid interview with bob tasca did they stream the trip draw that uh, Friday night? Did they stream that, or was that? I don't recall. Okay. She had a really good discussion with Bob Tasker right there and really did a great job. So um, shout out to Jamie Howe. She does a great job. And uh, sad that she's not on Fox Sports anymore because I thought she was she was good for the sport of drag racing. Yes, for sure. And, uh, again, I think it was a quality stream, revolutionary. No. Uh, there were many shots that were tremendous and – as again, having Richard on, I think gives us a lot of perspective. They realize they got stuff they want to work on. Yes. They realize that there was there's 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 room for improvement, and that's huge. I I think I think that there might be the sense on the other side that there isn't a room for improvement, mm-hmm. even though that uh, there is. Granted, when I, I say that. You and I know people in the NHRA, media, elsewhere, and there is this sense of wanting to move forward and do it different. You know, everybody talks about the suits of the NHRA. Well, I know some of those people that are in suits, and they want the sport to change. Yes. And and you can hear that from people uh, such as a Glenn Cromwell doing an interview with a Bobby Bennett. I don't think that was happening in years past mm-hmm. with other presidents, for example. Now, there are optics of this race, and I, I am very appreciative that 
Richard gave us insight that I don't think had been clear before of the 20000 being paid, and you guaranteed that, but everyone's pulling for the 250000 to try to win, but you have a situation where it is winner take all or they can split it, kind of like a big money bracket race. Because that's how those million dollar races work. If all these people buy in, it's kind of like a big drag racing gamble, honestly. And you get to a certain amount of money, and then people start talking, we're in the money rounds. Well, yeah. How are we going to split all this? Yeah. You know, yeah. and most of the time, the winner doesn't take a million dollars if it reached that number. He takes a huge amount of money, life changing money, honestly. But people also have a split uh, throughout. So I'm glad for that perspective. Nonetheless, and this is covered on competitionplus.com. Bobby doing his work, doing his diligence, getting it out there. There was a memo leaked or just handed out. Somehow it was put up on competitionplus.com and it explains the NHRA payout. So I don't think a lot of people realize that for one professional category, one professional category, the payout is like $313,000 all the way from winter to 20th. So it's not a top-heavy payout. Yes. Okay? So when you're talking about, oh, the NHRA needs better payouts, well, I would argue what you saw this weekend, you saw a big payout to one person. And that looks really good. And you get some spin. You get some hype. You get some people covering that. Because I will say, this race did something huge. You had people tied in like a Ralph Shaheen. That speed sport covers all of motorsports. You had Sports Illustrated dropping from their website news on this race. You had major outlets picking this thing up. And that is certainly good. But I, again, I don't think people realize that an NHRA national event, you're looking at about a million dollars of checks being wrote out. Yeah. No, for sure. And like I said, I echo all those sentiments you just said. And, you know, you, and you, like I said, I, I've said this word a bunch of times during this this uh, this broadcast so far. When they were getting down to the later rounds, and I, it was great racing all throughout. But you could just feel just that intensity, just that drama in those final rounds because you knew the big time money that was on the line. You felt it between Matt Hagen and Austin Proc. You felt it between Doug Letta and Clay Milliken. And so I tell you what. This event in a whole, hopefully it just it just opens that discussion up and say, hey, we can do things differently. We don't have to stick to this, this, just, just this one thing, you know, and um, I think definitely NHRA took notice and we'll see how, you know, how this all plays out in, in the future. But it was all around just a great event. And I'm happy I was able to be to say I was there because it was, it was so cool to witness in person for sure. Man, I'm glad you were there. Congratulations. Spectacular event. And uh, Stan, I understand that it isn't any different, uh, that it's not a lot of growth, but to say one is paying out more than the other, again, that's where I think a lot of people are misunderstanding. You've got people getting paid all the way to 20th, okay, in an NHRA national event. Again, it's not top heavy. You talk with NHRA, NHRA owners, like I have several uh, several of them since after this race, one big factor is that $20,000. Like rolling in the gate, making one run, give me $20,000 because you got to show because I'm here. And I can certainly understand that. And how that was broke down to me and what that pays. If you are a smaller team, let's say a leverage, for example, well, that pays for crew, lodging, getting there, and making that run. And it makes it where you go back to like NASCAR programs when they used to have the start and park scenario. You have teams that can show up for a race. They start. They park it, but they make a little bit of money and they continue to improve their program and they may very well become a top tier team just like, well, what happened with Martin Truex and the Denver Mattress team and them becoming what they did. They started as a start and park. Mm. Okay. What was the payout for the uh, the top versus funny car shootout? Was it 10000 The The race in which we just... No, for top field versus funny car for for winning that was it ten thousand dollars to the winner? I I'm not sure. Gotcha. I yeah, don't I'm recall. Not... I don't recall. I, again, he got caught up with everybody else getting all the big yeah. money. Now, granted, Chad Green is the only other funny. You know, he he's I mean he's up there with John Force now <laughs> in that area. <laughs> yeah. 
And obviously, you know, you know, Corey Mack won it the second year in 2000. So John won the first one in 99. Corey Mack won the second one in 2000. But Chad Green, hey, funny cars are two and one against top field drafters in the in the top field versus funny car shootout. It's pretty cool. Right, right, right. Stan, uh, it is professional drag racing, but if you want to go along with that sentiment, then a lot of great drag racers who were part time aren't professional with what you're saying. So be careful about that. Now, thousand for the the top field versus funny car shootout, ten thousand dollars. To the right. Way. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, whether it's a part time team or professional team, uh, is TJ Zizzo not professional? Yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say Doug Foley's not a professional. I mean, yeah. I would, I'd be careful about that line. Uh, even people showing up part time, they're professional. They're professional. And great drag rate. <laughs> Also, another thing, Darren, and Richard was clear about this, and that's something I'm glad we had Richard on. I'm glad he tells it like it is, and he expresses it, because you've got the camps of, like, get H or die. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Uh, as Richard said, they're the big show. This was NHRA licensed drivers. Yep. NHRA parts and pieces approved, NHRA certified chassis, NHRA sanctioned track, operating under, if anything went wrong, NHRA blanket insurance. Yep. Yep. So, again, for everybody out there that is like, NHRA, die. No. I want the NHRA to improve, but the death of the NHRA, I would put drag racing Way down, way down. Remember, we had Steve Earwood on the show, and we were talking with him, and we asked, what has hurt drag racing the most? Steve Earwood said, "We because we were split. We were divided. He's like, we lost ground to NASCAR. He, he point blank said yeah. that because we were divided. In that, he's talking about IHRA and NHRA. Yeah. We don't need division." Now, there certainly can be a lot of diversity, but the professional ranks of drag racing, for it to continue to move forward, for everybody to get that money they're talking about, to be up there with F1, NASCAR, everything else, and push that way, there's got to be unity. And I think, I think from what we heard from Richard, that's what they really want. They want to do it differently. Let's take some chances. Let's take some shots, but we got to do it together. And Lee, I was on that show with you when we interviewed uh, Steve Yearwood about, about about a year ago or something like that. And you know, you, he said that verbatim, and and that's and that's why I respect Richard Freeman so much. You know, for him coming on here tonight and saying that because, like I said, he could have took the route of saying, "Hey, you know, um, you know, we you know we want to do this differently, and we don't we don't we don't we don't agree with NHRA and, and NHRA die stuff like that." But he said, "No, like you know," and when I asked him, I said, "Hey, what is the relationship like right now between NHRA and Pro?" And he said, "Hey, you know, maybe there is some tension, but we are fine, you know." And that's what I like, that there's not this big division between the two because, like you said, NHRA is top dog. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to the Gator Nationals now and, and just seeing just, you know, just what they kind of – what what seed was planted in their ear after this race. Right. And let me say this. If if you are really out there and you want the NHRA not to succeed, stop buying a ticket. Mm -hmm. Stop going to a show. It, it fascinates me. Are you a fan or not a fan? And I think Alan Reinhardt said it today <laughs> that like he said in particular drag racing fans, it was funny. And I had to kind of agree with him. I see it so much now uh, covering the sport in the way that I do and going to so many drag races and hearing so many different opinions. Honestly, it seems like people want change, but when change comes, they don't want it anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, and again, again, like, Let's go a little deeper. The NHRA, everybody, all oh, the NHRA this, NHRA that. Well, hang on. The competitors have got issues here. And what I mean by that, I hear all the time, because I want them to, more throttle wax. Who doesn't want more throttle wax, Darren? Do you want more throttle wax, Darren? I do. Okay, how many throttle wax were down there at the pro shootout? Uh, one car. One car. So it's not the NHRA, is it? No. It's the competitors. Yes. I want long, smoky burnouts. I heard the hot mic, Wes Bucks, to the pro stock competitors. We need, we don't need no baby burnouts. I wonder if the same sentiments is if the NHRA official came around and said, now, pro stock, don't give us no baby burnouts. 
the burnouts not being long and smoky, that's not NHRA, that's competitors. Uh, you know, think about this. If it wasn't for NHRA implementing a rule, you and I wouldn't see the front end of a pro stock car. Mm -hmm. I also know the NHRA went around and talked with Nitro teams and they're like, hey, what can we get you to do to whack the throttle? Can we pay you? Can we give you points? What? Because thank God for Terry Haddock. Thank God for Alexis Jadoria. Thank God for Tim Wilkerson. Thank uh, Scott Palmer and, and the Leverage Gang and those who are still doing it. I, I get it. You don't have to do it no more. There's arguments that it could hurt the tune-up, arguments that it doesn't hurt the tune-up. But nonetheless, that's not an NHRA problem. I don't know. I'm just saying, bring it back to the middle a little bit. They had a spectacular drag race, but I don't think anybody over there is calling for the death of the NHRA like some people are. It, and, you know, question on that, because obviously you're more, you know, online than I am. Is that really what the, uh, you know, what people have been saying online as far as like X and Instagram and, and, and Facebook? Because from what I've read, everything has been pretty, pretty positive on the pro side. But what have, what have you read online as far as, you know, you know, the results of this race? Oh, very positive on the race itself and what Pro uh, did. Very mm -hmm. positive. But you do have those that are negative, in particular, on the NHRA. A lot of sentiment about, oh, I hope the NHRA is watching. They needed to see this. Mm -hmm. And I don't I disagree with that, but to have the rhetoric in the heightened sense of death to the NHRA, no, that's the wrong stance to have, wrong stance to take. That's not even the stance that we have from Richard. And correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't want to call anybody out, but there was there were certain drivers that you know did call NHRA and say, hey, this is this is the way you run a drag race. Is, is that correct? Uh, there were things said like that. And again, I, I I appreciate Richard's perspective, and I'm glad we had him on. I think there's still a lot more to learn from the competitors because Darren. Stampede of Speed, 2023. Was that not a spectacular drag race? Best race of the year. Uh, finals, Pomona. Was that not a spectacular drag race? Second best race of the year. That's what I'm getting at. We have seen some spectacular drag racing. And, like, I've seen people, oh, it was great to see fuel cars going side by side finally. See how great that track was. The track was on kill. The track was spectacular. But the NHRA Safety Safari has gave routinely spectacular tracks and we have seen great fuel racing especially this last year that first round of nitro was a smoke fest i'm gonna just say that the track wasn't that great just okay just saying. at night at night they were hauling but during the day it was first round was kind of a smoke fest i don't think i think only one car got down that whole session during the first round of eliminations just saying okay just saying which again i don't mind that i i don't mind I yeah, I don't mind it. I'm no, fine no. with these high powered cars smoking yeah. smoking tires. No, it made it fun, but I'm just saying from what you're saying with people saying, hey, you know, finally we see cars side by side and you know, look at the track they gave us. Well, I mean, there was a lot of tire smoke during that first round. Yeah. Yeah. They had a spectacular event. They had a spectacular event. It just it's fascinating it's the, the, how it has seemed to creep in amongst the, the people chatting of like this 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 versus type of situation. I hope this opens up the door and people have a lot better dialogue afterwards and things do uh, move forward. I hope that we see, and I do expect another pro shootout to, to happen. And uh, what a great drag race it was. And I think we're all looking forward to what is next. And we're looking forward to, the World Series of Pro Mom that's about to go down. And it all rolling into a lot of excitement for drag racing right now, going into the Gator Nationals and beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Drag, like I said, drag racing is full effect. And before the Gator Nationals, we got, man, the 66 running of the Good Vibrations Motorsports March Meet at iconic Famoso Drag Strip, front engine top field dragster, Nitro Funny Car, A gas, B gas, C gas, D gas, Junior Fuel, A Fuel, all oh, man. Nitro all the way. I cannot wait. The March meet is about to be fire. Man, next weekend, baby. Let's do it. March meet is going to be spectacular. You coming? I will not be in March meet. I will be in Bell Rose. Gotcha. Gotcha. 
So you just do the March me one year and just say screw it, you know. But I see how it is, you know. Uh, well, no, but I, I, I mean, I go to Bell Rose. That's my. No, I see how it is. You know, it's cool. It's cool. Right. Just like, just like how you give me crap about coming to races, I'm about to give you crap now. So you know. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So how many races did I do last year? <laughs> okay, I have, I have a full time job. Okay, wow. <laughs> okay, Darren. Oh, okay, where, Darren. where are you? Where are you at this past weekend, though? Where are you at? I was at home. Yeah, why? Why was that the racetrack? Where are you at? I was at home and uh, enjoying some time with mom. Okay. Why aren't you on a road, sir? Because I was home with mom. But there was a drag race this past weekend. There was. A great drag race. Hmm. Yeah. Slacking, man. Slacking. <sighs> Slacking. Well, 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 you know, everybody uh so so many were there so many were there and just after traveling back and forth to mckinney and a long season i was like yeah take some time enjoy some time with mom because it's about to ramp up and it be is. full blast it is i mean matter of fact with the pro shootout and let's say they stick with this type of uh weekend i mean they're kicking off the drag racing season Big time, and you go back. We're, we're, I mean, go back. Uh, U.S. Street Car National. So we had that event too. So we're in a great time. Drag racing and racing, and overall, it doesn't doesn't stop. No, for sure. Like you said, it's ratcheting up right now. I talked about the March meet, NHRA testing in Gainesville is coming up. Obviously, the Gator Nationals. So, um, man, drag racing is back in full effect. And like we say, there's never really an off season. Drag racing is year round. But you know, you know, the the the, the, the series that we love, NHRA, is uh, is right around the corner. It is right around the corner. Oh, before, our chaos. Before, before we go off there, though, Lee, I just want to I just want to give a shout out to the winners because you know we talked about a lot about the pro racing itself and you know you know NHRA versus pro and you know what NHRA could do better and you know I, what a great race pro put on. I want to give a shout out to the winners though, Erica Enders. I talked about it that final round. You could feel it. You know with her against Dave Conley. Dave Conley back in the back behind the wheel of a pro stock car. That was a great final round. Doug Coletta, your 2023 top field world champion, getting the win there and top field eliminator. Chad Green whooping up on the dragsters. But how about Austin Proc? I mean. Couldn't even get down the track during qualifying. And I knew Jimmy Proc would get that thing put together for eliminations. And they did just that. For Proc to win in his first race behind the wheel of a Nitro Funny Car uh, with his dad tuning and his brother on that race car as well. Just what a storybook, storybook ending right there. I thought that was really cool. Spectacular story. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so many things. And, you know, not shocked at all. Not shocked at all that Austin Proc was able to do what he he did i mean he didn't need much time to get up to speed he licensed yeah. in a, you know before he had top field license he had a funny car license and you know uh he also uh, test regularly the funny car he knew what he was doing yeah and also i think it's going to be interesting because i heard it from somewhere that he wasn't sitting quite right and maybe some adjustments be made and he like he see a little better over over the hat so uh, he's going to get even more comfortable, it would seem, and uh, got the bugs worked out, and that car uh, flew for sure, and they picked up the win. Doug Coletta, Alan Johnson, Coletta Motorsports, they haven't missed a beat, apparently. Nope. No, for sure. And uh, Interesting as well. I think, you know, and I could be wrong, but from what I saw, I think – Brian Houston now is on Sean Langdon's car, and Max Savage is now the assistant crew chief on the Max Tours Dragster. So a little bit of shake up there. You know, you've always seen Allen and Brian kind of side by side. From what I saw, I think Brian Houston is now on, on Langdon's car. But I could be wrong. I could have saw that wrong. Not sure, though. Right. Erica Enders. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to go. She might have her best Gainesville ever coming up <laughs> in recent memory. Gainesville has not been... Uh, kind to her, but uh, we may very well see a different Gainesville for her uh, coming up, and uh, they're going to be tough once again. Uh-oh. And we lost Darren. Technical difficulties. It happens when you're live. Uh, Jeff, uh, hey, reach out to me. Uh, it's easy to it's easy to get a hold of me. Monday Morning Racer at gmail.com or just James RL Craft on Facebook. I think I think we're actually friends on Facebook, if I remember correctly. Uh, just reach out to me. It all depends on schedule and what's where I'm going and and 
what is happening. I, uh, when it comes to other forms of drag racing, I mean, you look on the Monday Morning Racer channel from back of the track drag racing to uh, no prep and other varieties, love it all. It's, it's a diverse sport, and I think it's worth entertaining and being entertained by all of it. I have no idea what you said. I just got back on. Sorry. Right, well, thank you for coming back on. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate yeah, I, had no, I had no idea what point you were just making. <laughs> I caught yeah. it right at the end. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Erica Enders, Doug Coletta, Austin Proc, Chad Green. And I love how they brought more, the, the guys back up, did Chicago style, and did it top field versus funny car. Uh, you know, seen some of that in testing uh, yeah. just for fun but it's always cool to see it needs to happen more often. I don't think it needs to happen every year, mm -hmm. but certainly it needs to happen where we don't have a 25 year gap. Yeah. And I love how they did the stagger start. Obviously, you know, they did that in the past. So I thought that was really mm -hmm. cool. And like you said, it's, it's something we don't need to see every year, but you know, it's top field versus funny car. It's like, we, it's like the, the dream matchup that we always want to see. It's like a spectacle. Mm -hmm. We got to see that this past weekend. And for me to be able to see it in person, Lee, you know, I'm a drag racing nut. Like I love drag racing. I love history of drag racing. And so to see a top field lineup against a funny car, I know you've seen it in person. I believe at Phoenix testing before, but that was yes. my first time seeing a top field car lineup against a funny car, man. It was so cool to see dream come true for real. Right, right. The the first time something like that has seen been seen in competition other than, well, Chris Graves and Nitro Chaos. That is true. That is true. Yes, that is true. So, yeah. Oh, did you hear the news? What's that? The NHRA apparently has official class is going to be calling fuel altered to the lanes. Oh. Yeah, I saw a little entry form for Bowling Green. Quite interesting, man. NHRA's redheaded stepchild making a return, oh. are they? Mm, mm, mm. I like it. I like I it. I like it, too. I, I like, like it. it, too. We love fuel alters over here, man. Hey, fuel alters are badass. They are. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. I I personally, I think that's one of the best things about March meat fuel alters at March meat. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. You know, I just dropped a video of the world fuel alter nationals at Eddieville raceway park. Love that event. You just, oh, give me fuel alters of any variety. What took you so long to get it out, Lee? <sighs> slacking, <laughs> slacking, straight up slacking. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Awesome. Got anything else there? No, that's about it, man. Like I said, just I, I've said this a hundred times so far. What an amazing event. I'm so happy I was there. I, 20 years from now, I can say I was at the first ever SCAG Pro Superstar shootout. I can say I was there to see Top Field versus Funny Car. I was there to say I was able to see 341 miles per hour in person. I was there to say I was able to see final rounds under the lights, man. It was such an amazing event, and hopefully they continue to do it. And Man, it was, it was awesome. Before we go, let me give this question to you. Wait, is Fuel Alters not ran at March Meet? a NHRA event. So March would, would you like NHRA. to explain that? Yeah, March Meet is not an NHRA event. It's an independent event. It's just run under the NHRA Hot Rod Heritage Series. But NHRA is not, uh, the March Meet is not an NHRA event. Now, the California Hot Rod Reunion is, but March Meet is not. There you go. Yes. Nuance. Well, we do want to welcome to the Competition Plus Power Hour a, a new partner. And that new partner can certainly give you confidence in the red line red line synthetic oils they come on board along with competitionplus.com to support the competitionplus.com power hour and i know from many competitors out there in the fuel ranks and beyond if you want confidence when you go in the red line it is red line synthetic products from the valve train to the uh gear drive everything they've got a product to cover what you need in motorsports to give you confidence in any application. We'll hear from them closing out. Darren, once again, great to be on the show with you. To everyone that watched, thank you for watching. Hit the like button, hit the share button. See y'all. Reliability to drive thousands of miles. Confidence for those who fly high. Redline oil products give you the power to crush the competition and a track record of being the best. 
Redline Oil Products. You push it to the limit. We'll protect it.